almost through. There's one more thing, and that's the meta price. Um, the meta, meta price is a special thing. The meta price is awarded to outstanding products or services supporting the European Multilingual Information Society. And now we're awarding the prize tonight uh, for the fourth time. Also, brief recap to keep the tension mounting. Uh, some of the, or not some, all of the previous winners actually. Uh, maybe from bottom to top, we had LDC and Elra uh, with the second meta prize uh, that they shared uh, in 2011. Uh, the company Exalead with their product Voxalead. Also, the second prize, we had GBGO mobile translators. Um, also predicting back then the great success story that GBGO uh, became shortly after. Uh, and Moses, funnily enough, a uh, clear candidate back then in 2011 for the Meta Prize. One year, one year later, we had uh, the JSC Optima activity of the European Commission, JSC in Italy, who provide the corpora that basically many, many machine translation projects and products uh, rely upon. And last year, no, not last year, 2013, the last Meta Forum, we awarded the prize to the Rosetta Foundation for their groundbreaking work. So, again, the prize is awarded to outstanding products or services supporting the European Multilingual Information Society. And we had three nominations, and as you can see, of course, they are anonymous. Um, the, the case is also very clear in this case. And... Uh, Tamash, maybe you can read out what it says on the, on the certificate without mentioning the name yet. Oh, you mean reading the... Is it, is it, is it, is it this? For, groundbreak, for groundbreaking work in overcoming language barriers through... A Louder, and stick the mic to you. For, for groundbreaking work in overcoming language barriers through a multilingual lexicalized semantic network and ontology, making use of heterogeneous data series, services. Sorry. The resulting encyclopedic dictionary provides concepts and named entities lexicalized in many languages, enriched with semantic relations. Now you guessed. Yes. Okay, so now... <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, I'm really honored. I mean, I, I don't have... I, I'm not sure I'm able to, uh, <laughs> to talk now. I'm so excited. So, uh, well, uh, I couldn't believe it when, when I was told. <laughs> okay, so, well... Um, just a little bit of background. So uh, I'm coming from 15 years of research in my PhD topic, which, uh, which was word census evaluation. So I've always been very interested in uh, automatically addressing this problem of determ computationally determining the meaning of uh, words in context, like Thomas and Mario played the strikers in Munich, and uh, I was struggling for, I've been struggling for associating uh, the right meanings uh, uh, with the words, uh, usually common nouns and verbs and so on, occurring in context. And, but ideally, one would like also to do that for named entities, like uh, par even partial mentions like Thomas and Mario. So I'm coming from this background, but uh, the point is that e already uh, 15 years ago, uh, we were facing two key problems. One was uh, the so-called uh, well-known knowledge acquisition bottleneck. Where do we get all this knowledge from? And, uh, well, if we use a supervised system, we need a lot of training data, and we need to repeat this uh, training effort and annotation effort for each and every language and each domain of interest. The second key problem, well, key point, was that uh, the resources available uh, at that time and actually uh, before Babelnet were um, either focusing on lexicographic information like uh, uh, computational lexicons like WordNet 
or uh, encyclopedic information like uh, all the Wikipedia derived resources like DBpedia. And so these are great resources, but they are not uh, bringing the two uh, words together. And so uh, it all started with the idea of merging uh, WordNet and Wikipedia. And so uh, initially, uh, I promised in, in, uh, in my project proposal uh, as an ERC, European Research Council starting grant, uh, that I would merge WordNet and Wikipedia and, uh, as, in order to obtain a wide coverage semantic network, which would include both encyclopedic information and lexicographic one. So from Wikipedia, I was expecting to obtain named entities and specialized concepts. From WordNet, concepts that are usually lexicalized as common nouns, verbs, adjectives, and so on. But the nice thing is that there's a quite uh, big intersection between these two resources, which are concepts from both resources. And so starting from this, uh, a number of improvements uh, came out. And so Babelnet now is a merger of several resources of different kinds, still uh, uh, keeping the promise of integrating all these uh, different kinds of knowledge. And uh, as of today, Babelnet 3.0, we have uh, six different uh, resources integrated and more uh, are to come. Um, and these resources are, uh, well, Wikipedia, WordNet, the most popular computational lexicon of English, uh, open Multilingual WordNet, which is a collection of open WordNets linked to the Princeton English WordNet. Wikipedia, which is the largest collaborative encyclopedia. Wikidata, which is the largest collaborative knowledge base. Uh, Wiktionary, which is the largest collaborative dictionary. And also other dictionaries like uh, uh, Omega Wiki, which is a medium-sized collaborative multilingual dictionary, which is also uh, very interesting. And finally, high quality automatic sense based translations. So, all this information is integrated into um, a single uh, semantic network that can be used. And so, why do we need Babelnet if it's not clear already? Well, first, for multilinguality. So, uh, the same concept is expressed in tens of languages, uh, sometimes hundreds, like Allen Wrench um, or Hex Key. So, it's a wrench for Allen Screws. You have pictures, you have uh, definitions but you have a lot of translations into many other languages. So this is one single concept with uh, multiple translations for uh, several languages. So the second point is coverage. So uh, we wanted to go for as many languages as possible. And so currently Babelnet covers 271 languages, a lot of minority languages that were mentioned uh, in the panel before, and 14 million entries. This is thanks to the integration of all these resources. It's like a puzzle. So you get uh, a lot of different heterogeneous pieces of knowledge from the various resources. The other thing is, which I already mentioned, but uh, I would like to stress a bit more, is that concepts and named entities now live together. And you can use one to improve the other, or you can use one to disambiguate the other. Like uh, dictionary encyclopedic knowledge is now semantically interconnected. Like you can see here, Mario, Mario Draghi connected to La Sapienza, or uh, faculty as a concept connected to a named entity like Sapienza, or you have Latvia connected to uh, Lithuanian cuisine, uh, concepts like coast or drama, and named entities like Taiga and uh, Sigmund Augustus. So you see, uh, it's, a, it's a, a word, two words that live together. And then it's also, it also uh, fosters an idea of the dictionary of the future, in which um, we, we, we no more have uh, the paper style uh, dictionary uh, transposed into electronic format. We have a new structure, which is a semantic network, based on the idea coming from WordNet, extended to, uh, uh, multi to multilingual uh, uh, lexicalizations. So we have multilingual synsets now that we call Babel synsets, sets of synonyms in uh, uh, as many languages as possible. And an entry in the dictionary has pictures, has definitions in multiple languages, has translations in, mus in multiple languages. And so all this information uh, uh, allows us to move on. And uh, also it provides uh, a full-fledged taxonomy. Uh, and you can also uh, query it via our Sparkle endpoint, and which currently uh, contains uh, uh, two billion triples. So uh, and it's, it's uh, going to become uh, a, a, an important core of the linguistic linked open data uh, cloud. And as an end user, what can you do? Well, you can search and translate. This is uh, one of the most recent developments. So we added a new drop-down drop menu, 
uh, thanks to which uh, the user can um, a query in a, in a source language and obtain the translations in as many languages as she likes. So for example, if I query uh, and I type uh, plane, I get the various meanings of plane with pictures with uh, uh, translations into the languages I was interested in. And so this is again innovative compared to uh, any other dictionary or encyclopedia. And finally, you can explore the network. As a user, you can play with knowledge. So you can see what is connected to the concept of interest. You can uh, navigate the graph, and we are working on uh, new uh, versions of this. While as a computer scientist, what, do you, what can you do? Well, you can do a lot of things. Uh, people are working uh, on uh, computer-assisted translation using Babelnet or uh, machine translation, automatic machine translation, uh, much more analytics. But what I'm interested in is, is disambiguating, understanding text automatically. And so, uh, for example, you can take a sentence or a text written in any language, this is Italian, uh, Twitter strengthens uh, private chats. Uh, you can now communicate with everybody. And what is really nice about this is that now we have uh, a disambiguation of this text containing named entities, containing concepts, and pictures. So now anybody, even if you don't speak Italian, at least you get an idea of what we're talking about. Visually, I mean, even communicate is, is depicted. And also, you can disambiguate it in a language agnostic setting. This was also mentioned earlier uh, during, I think, a panel. And this is also a nice feature, because now, in a concept, we have uh, words which lexicalize the concept in different languages. So why not mixing sentences written in different languages? So I could provide, uh, for example, the same news uh, written in English and in Italian. This is technology. Uh, uh, a Samsung fingerprint uh, flow exposed and the same similar in Italian, I can disambiguate this and get concepts for the two uh, sentences all together without knowing the languages uh, that I'm using. By just matching the various lexicalizations and using morphological analysis uh, to uh, identify the, the right concepts uh, in context. So there's much, much more, but unfortunately, there's no time. <laughs> so, and we are also running late. So uh, w one more thing I just wanted to mention. Babelnet is just the starting point. So uh, and, and one very important thing, and I'm very glad I'm here for this, is that this is part of a research product, project funded by the EU, by the European Research Council, but also for the linked data part uh, by, uh, in, in the FP7 uh, framework program uh, in the leader project. So the, it's very important to fund language technology research because, uh, well, uh, some projects might fail, some projects might do very well, but even if a number of these achieve uh, results, interesting results and enabling results, I think we need to, uh, um, to continue this uh, funding trend because otherwise we're going to stop and there's so much to do. So as I said, we just started. So more, uh, much more needs to be done to cover more languages, to cover more, uh, more lexicalizations, to label the semantic relations and so on. So, well, I thank you all. So I'm really excited about this prize. So now, I don't know, maybe you also, you're also now a bit excited about Babelnet. So what will you do with Babelnet tonight? <laughs> Thank you. Congrats. Congrats. Yes. So, this concludes our award ceremony. Congratulations again to all winners. Let's give them a round of applause.